Hi, humans. Hope everyone's having a happy Friday. It's the last day of class. So I hope everyone's as excited as I am. Um, some quick notes before we start on this practice. One, grades are up. Uh, grades are up. Uh, you can find them on uh, Google. On Google. And this you can access through either Moodle or uh, my website. Um, there should be six forms, so everyone should be able to look at it one at a time, and it should be okay. Uh, remember to remove your student ID afterward. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask. I think I explained everything yesterday on Thursday, kind of how everything's going to work. So if you have questions, still ask, but um, yeah. For midterm grading, just remember that um, you can ask me questions about it if you want, um, but if you want me to remark it, then note that I normally, I'm, I'm a harsh marker, um, and that's just because of my upbringing. Um, and so um, note that I, I'm probably harsher than the TAs. So if you want me to relook at something, then um, you better be 100% sure that you deserved, like you actually earned those points that the TAs removed, um, or else your score might go down. And if it goes down this time, I'm not going to, like, I, I will have it go down. So just a warning, um, don't, um, and mainly this is to, so that I have not a million people asking questions. Um, last time was okay because like it was in the middle of the year so I had like three or four weeks of people asking questions and that was okay we have basically Friday and Saturday um, so yeah um, <sighs> next up mini quiz and start a final um, so um, I waited until this morning to send an announcement um, well, no, I guess, okay, technically I'm recording this, it's Thursday night. Um, I tried to do it when I'm tired so that my brain is not working as well for the final practice, um, so that you, so that I can be better, um, so we can time this thing properly. Um, but yeah, no, I'll just end it now. So basically, um, I got word from the, um, that we need to start after classes end. So classes end Sunday. Um, so the final, so I have to actually push everything back one day, basically. So basically the final has to start, final starts Monday, um, which still means you'll have eight days to do everything. Yeah. So don't worry too, too much. Um, you will have eight days. So just a warning. Um, I know it's one less day, um, but you'll see it's not that long of an exam, so it should be okay. Um, since I have to push back the final anyway, um, I'm going to push back the mini quiz um, as well. Um, and so basically, I'm going to have the mini quiz. Um, it's going to be, so I'm not going to have a start Friday so that everyone has like the same opportunity to kind of do things. Um, and we'll do, um, yeah, so I'll have it be like from, I guess, I to be honest, I haven't really thought of it yet. Um, so we'll say it starts from Saturday um, at, um, we'll say so Saturday at noon, I guess, 12, um, and it'll end Sunday at, um, no, okay, here, we'll do this, Saturday at 9, uh, and then it'll end Sunday at um, 9 p.m. Um, and so that'll give me enough time to finish finalizing for the final um, to be sent out on Monday. So this is start. End. Um, so just a heads up. Um, not H's, I should read this. Um, so just a heads up, um, and you'll get an email. Um, sorry about having to do this, uh, but at least this gives you a little more time for... Um, uh, doing the, the, for practicing for the mini quiz. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. So basically mini quiz and final. So this practice version of the final is basically going to be, um, I tried to choose problems that are harder than what's on the final itself. So if you can follow along with this, you should be able to follow, be able to do the final. Um, there's only one question that's not like that. And I will go over that in a second, um, for the practice exam, uh, sorry for the mini quiz. 
uh, basically it's going to be questions even easier than what's on the final exam. Um, so it's going to be kind of a similar format from here. There might be one more question, um, and this I'm I'm figuring out on Saturday. Um, and if this happens, um, I'll send an email letting you guys know um, what's happening. Uh, but for now, this is kind of where where everything is staying at. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So let's go over the final. So it's the same instructions as before. Nothing really changes. Um, code of honor is also the same as before. I've been asked to put this little part from um, the university, um, just so that people know that we are actually being um, serious. Like, don't talk with each other. Um, don't use the internet. Um, if you're using websites to ask questions and get answers, that is against policy, um, and people will be reported, so just a heads up. Um, or if you talk with one another, that's also not allowed. Um, so if I find like exams that look alike, then know that like I'll have to put this into the university, yeah? Um, so it's exactly the same as last time. Um, don't cheat, like you guys have time, right? So don't don't worry. Um, I believe in you all, yeah? So remember, I guess uh, final is due April um, 13, right? Monday, April 13, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Um, okay, so let's start with the first question. Um, and basically, we're starting off with summations. So summations should be something you're kind of used to. You should have done this in school and stuff. Um, and so this is the question that I mentioned that the one on the final is actually a little harder than this one. Um, and that's because I tried to find a harder example, but any examples that were harder basically gave the solution for the problem itself. Um, and so there was no way for me to um, give a harder example without giving away the answer to the problem. Um, and so I, I'm kind of stuck doing an easier one, but it should basically be almost the same. Like it shouldn't be that much longer. I timed it and it's, um, it's not that much more. So you should be okay. Um, so. Um, and then everything else is also easier, yeah? So don't, don't worry from there. Um, okay, so exercise one. What you want to do first is we want to write the following formula using sigma notation. Um, so we have this, and we're going to want to write it as sigma notation. So remember the sigma notation, um, if you recall, it's something like this, yeah? We had something like this to n a i, yeah? Um, and so what we're going to notice right off the bat, so the, you're going to have to figure out kind of how to do it yourself. Um, you should already have tons of practice with these. Uh, but the way I kind of look at it is I just take the first thing and I try to find a pattern as to what's happening between each thing. So here I notice I have two, three, four, five. So it looks like I'm going to have something with fi. i is going to go from some number two, so here, I is going to go from some number two to some number five. Yeah. So this gives me, this will be F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5. Um, so here, um, this is scratch work on the right. Um, And then for this problem, you should actually show me scratch work. Show scratch work. Because I want to see how you're doing this. Like how you're thinking. Right? Uh, because generally for this one, I just want to see the form the summation formula. Um, but I need to see how you're thinking so that I know you're not um, just copying the answer from anywhere. So I need to see what you're kind of thinking, right? Um, so first. Uh, so kind of what did I do? So here, let me let me rewrite this. So here, let me delete this part. No, not what I want. Um, so basically, what should we do? I'm going to remove all this. Okay. So first, I want the F to the, the in my summation. 
uh, we have 2, f2, f3, f4, f5. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5. Therefore, i equals 2. And then 5 here. And then f, i. So this is where my kind of thought process came about, yeah? Um, and then, so here on the left, I'm kind of building my little formula. So, so far I have, why is it doing everything? So I'm building up this little formula here, yeah? Um, and so second, what I'm gonna think is, what do I, what's left? Um, I have left, I have left, one fourth, right? So I have one over four, plus one over nine, plus one over 16. Um, I'm just gonna do these in things. And actually, I don't really care about this one over thing. I'm just going to look at the 4, 9, and 6. But, like, I did 4, 9, and 6 for 3, 4, and 5, right? But I'm missing, like, what is it for 2, right? I should have something for every single number. So for 2, um, I guess it looks like you can kind of see a pattern here, yeah? So basically, this is testing your pattern solving skills. So here, this looks like 2 squared. This is 3 squared. This is 4 squared. Well, this theoretically is one squared, which would give me one, which makes sense, right? Because here I have something over one. So basically, this implies we should have something over, um, it looks like here, um, but see, so the problem here is that these are my eyes, yeah? Um, and so I need to represent these, represent using eyes. Sent using i. So really here, if I look, I have 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2, right, because I have 1 squared, 3 goes to 2 squared, 4 goes to 3 squared, 5 goes to 4 squared. So really, I kind of have i minus 1, right, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2, 4 goes to 3, 5 goes to 2, squared. So this part is going to give me i minus 1 squared, yeah? Um, and so this is part 1. That part's done. That simple. So it's uh, this first part is you thinking. You got to think it out, um, and it should be okay from there. Um, and so, so that we can see, uh, actually, this is okay. So let me bring this formula here. Then it's asking, then using the fact that f of x is equal to this and the summation formulas, so you should use the summation formulas from in class, you're going to find the result. Okay, so let's use this fact. So let's plug this in. So this is equal to, um, is equal to, uh, do I have room on the right? Nope, I don't. So I'm going to put this yeah, down here go away. I'm going to put this here and we get F. Uh, so I have everything else is the same. Five, except I'm replacing my F of I with F of X, right? So, uh, so here I have three I minus one, right? Because I have I, I'm plugging in I to the four plus three times I minus one cubed divided by I minus one squared. Yeah. Okay. Well, now let's now we're supposed to find the result. So let's find the result. Um, so here I can cancel the i minus 2 right from everywhere. Um, so here I have this goes away. This becomes a 2. This becomes a 1. Um, and so what do I have? I have the summation of i equals 2 to the 5. 3 times i minus 1 squared plus 3 times i minus 1. So let's kind of do this. This we get i equals 2 to the 5, 3. I'll pull out the 3. Um, this, uh, I'll do this in two steps. So i minus 1 squared plus i minus 1. Notice how I'm showing all the steps. Um, so i squared minus 2i plus 1 plus i minus 1. So what do we get? Uh, this 3 I can bring out in front. 
i equals 2 to the 5. And here I'll cancel. So I have an i squared minus 2i plus i is minus i. And then plus 1 minus 1 is just 0. So that's it. So I get this. Now this 3 is for this whole thing. Um, and so now what do we get? Um, and I just realized I don't have my summation formulas up because I'm a banana. Uh, so let me quickly bring that up as I talk about life. Um, life is good. Well, not really. I'm super busy. You all are keeping me busy. Stop. I, I kind of want a life. Well, kind of. I do have other work I need to do. But anyway, that's aside. Banana. I'm going to be quiet now. So summations. Um, there it is. Uh, yeah, so summation. Um, so these are in the book. And so what do we have? I'll put the ones we're going to use, right? So these are all properties we're using from the book. So here I have one property, i equals 1 to the n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Um, I also have the property, I'll put it here in the top left, i equals 1 to the n of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Um, but I also need um, something because here I have i equals 2 to 5, right? Um, and so that I'm going to have to remember another property. Um, so let me remember what these are. This is number 8. This is number 9. Um, and I'm going to have to remember property number 5. So property number 5. Oh, I just realized I left it in French. Oh, well, sorry. Uh, you can see I use these notes from my French class when I taught this in, in uh, Montreal. Um, so I need to use property 3. There we go. Um, and here we have i equals m to n of whatever. Ah, this moves. This room. Ah, uh, banana. No, what happened? I just want this part. There. This is equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of a i minus i equals 1 to n of m minus 1 a i. So basically this number 3 is going to help us make this i equals 2 kind of go away. Um, so what do we have? We have 3 times i equals 2 i squared to the 5 minus 3 times i i equals 2 to the 5. Here I distributed the 3, right? And I brought this negative sign out. So here, let's solve this. So here we have 3 times, so here I'm using property 3, um, i equals 1 to 5 i squared minus i equals 1 to, what's 2 minus 1? This is just 1, so i squared. Minus 3 times i equals 1 to the 5 of i minus um, i equals 1 to the 1, again, so 2 minus 1 is 1, i. So what do we have here? I'm going to use property um, 8 and 9. Um, and so what do we get? We get 3 times, this first one will give me, so here I have a 5, so that is my n, so I have 5 times 5 plus 1, times 2 times 5 plus 1, over 6, minus, here since I only have one summation, I can just do 1 squared. That's okay, because it's only one thing, so it's quick and easy. Um, if not, I would use the same exact formula 9, yeah? Note your required to use the summation formulas. The only time you don't have to is when there's only one thing. Yeah? When it's two or more, I want you to use these formulas. So what do we have for this one? Um, and I want you to use the formula so I know that you're actually being able to manipulate these property properly. 
Um, so what do we have? So for this second one, this is property eight. I have five, right? Because my n is five. Five times five plus one over three over two. Sorry, two minus. And here, like I said, if there's only one term, you can just write it out. You don't have to do the formula. So again, we have three times five times six times eleven over six. I normally leave these multiplications instead of multiplying them all together because, as you will see in a second, this helps me cancel things very easily. Uh, one squared is just one. I don't know why I did that. Why is this there? Three times five times six over two minus one. So we have three times. So here, these sixes cancel, and the twos cancel here, and I get a three left over. So I get five times eleven minus one, minus three times five times three minus one, which is three times fifty-five minus one minus three times fifteen minus one, which is three times fifty-four minus um, three times. Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, three times fourteen. Yeah. And I just realized the solution set online is wrong. Um, so I'll update that. Or, yeah, it's not online yet, huh? Okay, good. I can update it before I put it up online. Um, this should give me 3 times 54. Uh, 54 times 3 is 12, 15, 16. So 162 minus 14 times 3 is 12 and 4, so 42, so we get 122. And so that is our answer, and that is kind of what everything looks like. So we did this problem in what looks like 20 minutes. Um, that was me knowing the problem. This problem should take you about one hour, is what I'm expecting. Um, on the, um, on the uh, mini quiz, it should be significantly shorter. It should be like five minutes as long as you have the properties next to you. Um, I tested it. It took me like less than a minute. Um, and so normally I multiply by like six um, to see how long things take. So it should take like five or six minutes for this um, one question. So, so, it should be, so it should be okay. So this question will appear. Next question. Um, find the following limit. Um, so basically, you want to find what the following limit is. Um, and in this case, we're basically going to be using um, our antiderivative rule things in order to um, solve this. Um, and so let's remember like some of the antiderivative the properties, right? We we saw a few. Ooh, I'm getting all burpy. Um, we saw a few of these. Like a few of these are all written on the on the notes. So it should be easy to do, yeah? Um, so I think on the notes, I write, write this wrong as well um, because this was from the French book. Um, remember that secant x squared? <coughs> is equal to secant x times secant x. Um, and in the book, I have it written wrong. I have it written secant squared x. Um, so these, I don't like this notation, um, but even I screw it up because it's so, it's so normally used. Um, so anyway, so just note that these are the same. Um, and so basically what we're doing here is we find the antiderivative of everything. So the first question is, we need to, so I need you to show work as well for this, and I need you to show each step. So here we need to use the properties to kind of split this up. So the first thing I need to do is split this up into my multiple integrals. Yeah, so this is one of the properties and I don't know why, but it likes doing this with the program I use. It always brings that X in the back, DX, yeah? Um, and so if you look on, on um, the formula sheet, basically, secant squared, I already know. This is tan of x plus c, right? Um, I'll do a c1 because we'll get something different for each one. Um, 1 over x, we know. 
this is natural log of x plus c2, right? This is some other constant. And the third one, this is also in our notes. This is this arc sine, uh, sorry, arc secant of the absolute value of x plus some third constant. Make sure the constants are all different numbers. And so you get tan of x plus natural log of x plus arc secant of absolute value of x plus c. I just realized this is really easy, so this is probably not going to be 20 points. These are just test runs, um, so just heads up. So notice how that took us less than three minutes, right? It's literally just looking things up. But I need to see these steps. If I don't see these steps, this is only worth one point. You will lose points, period. Like, that's it. You will get one point. Everything, all these other lines are worth the other thing. So I need you to, for in this one, in this problem, I need you to show these steps. Online, um, when you're doing the mini quiz, um, you're not going to be able to show your steps. Um, so choose the one that matches most closely. Uh, so just note that you don't need to show steps um, for short answer or whatever. You just need to give me the answer. Um, I won't tell you which ones are short answer and which one is multiple choice. So this one could be multiple choice. It could be short answer. But I know some people were asking um, for short answers, whether or not you have to show all your work. No, I just want the answer. Um, there's not time to show work. Yeah. And it's already timed. There's a time limit. Um, so don't. Yeah, no. Uh, 